Okay, we're talking about gout. And this is a magic substance that does it, uric acid, right? Uric acid, they form, uric acid forms urate crystals, and there they are, very needle-shaped like ones. And on the left side here is a healthy joint, and what you notice is you get inflammation. But with inflammation, most people uh, say, well, what inflammation is, it swells up. In other words, fluid comes out of the, uh, the, the tissues there that in start inflammation. Um, and uh, it, that's what causes the swelling. A lot the, the reddening is occurred because the blood supply increases to the area. Uh, it becomes hot and it becomes uh, very painful because these in particular uh, crystals here, they build up, they, there they are on the side there, there's little night, but when they build up in very large clumps, you know, they're called calculi or actually tophi. I mean, uh, the uric acid crystals don't have to also uh, build up in the joints, they are, can build up in the kidneys and uh, cause kidney stones in the ureters. But now since we're talking about that, the pain is caused because the uric acid crystals um, uh, impinge, they, they they stick onto all the nerve endings there which causes the pain. And it is very, very painful. Uh, here is examples of these extreme build-up, which we call tophi, and here is one which is opened up, so obviously it got so bad and very painful and loses uh, mobility of the joint that has to be removed by surgical means. And here is another one on the right example that's really bad and look down here really really bad ones but here is an example of they're taking them out of the uh, uh, very badly joint and look at this one it's just incredible you can get to this level um, and here's a quick diagram of these uh, uric acid crystals in under the microscope and these CCP things are antibodies which respond to these I won't go into that because that's involved so uric acid or monosodium urate is that's its structural formula there we'll look at it uh, later but also it forms into other areas and here is the spine here and these green areas are actually where these uh, uric acid crystals are or calculi or tolfi if you want to call them and look at this one down it's a really bad case the other thing I quickly mentioned before is it does form inside the kidneys. You know, here is a picture where your kidneys are at the back. And the, there is a picture of the kidney. Look, you get even on top of the kidney, you've got some of these uh, tophi forming. And they're actually inside this central region of the kidneys called the calyx. And the other region there is the cortex. And in the cortex is where the uh, nephrons are, which filter. And eventually they try to get rid of them and uh, they get stuck in here. Some of them small enough to pass through. And everyone that's had kidney stones, is ex it's, it's very painful, like it is very painful in the joint uh, of uh, gout. Uh, it comes down the ureter. Here is the ureter there. It can get stuck there. And if it's going through the ureter and they're real spiking ones and, and it's a big stone, you're going to feel a lot of pain. And it can go into the bladder and then also can stick there and have other problems. All right, so now the next slide here is where does it come from? It comes from two sources. It's made within the body, right? It's called endogenous. You know, it comes within. And also comes from outside the body, exogenous, which we take in from food. Um, and we'll look here at the next slide here, which is really a, um, a summary of what I just said. Food intake or ingesti ingestion, it's endogenous, it's from within. Sorry, that's exogenous. And it's coming in, we've got RNA and DNA from our cells. When the, when the cells are destroyed, tissue destruction I've written here, the RNA and the DNA, which is present in all human cells, finally form this substance here, uric acid. This is the culprit. Anyway, what they, uh, it says humans don't have the enzymes to break down uric acid, all right? And so it has to be excreted by the kidneys, all right? So the only thing left is, well, we've got this uric acid in the blood. We're going to have to get rid of it through the kidney system, right? So that's what that statement says. The kidney actually filters it at the top end called the Bowman's capsule or the glomerular filtrate and then it reabsorbs about 90% of that filtrate. Now this is a little evolutionary mechanism because 
uh, it has been shown that uric acid is uh, good for you but not good when you've got too much of it in deposits and it forms kidney stones or it forms uh, gout in your joints now I've got here underlined uric acid is beneficial because it triggers the inflammatory response you know the inflammatory response you know when it gets red and hot and puffy and all that kind of stuff it has been argued that due to the powerful antioxidant activity in other words from the inflammatory response of uric acid the evolutionary benefit could be could be the increased life expectancy of hominids in other words pre-humans so it they think that it, having high uric acid levels was good in um, increasing the the lie of the expectancy of hominids why well finally the uric acid has protective effects against several degenerative diseases neurodegenerative diseases in other words it protects from the breakdown of the neurons in the body suggesting it could have interesting actions on neural development in the function of humans in other words if the human uh, brain or the human uh, neurons are able to be um, protected because of uric acid then you can advance to higher forms all right in the past humanoids had the ability to break down uric acid by an enzyme called uricase because they had the the, the gene called uricase in actual fact we've got the gene now but it's inactive all right so if we look at this step over here in the past uh, the the, the pre-humans had the ability to break it down we as uh, humans we stop here because we don't have uricase enzyme we don't have the, the active well, actually the gene is present but it's inactivated but in the post human uh, the humanoids let's call them post human they had the ability to break it down to allotonin allotonic acid urea and then get rid of it but because they uh, as an evolutionary consequence uric acid was supposed to be good for development of brain cells and therefore human intelligence it was a gene that was selected now going back so uric acid does have uh, benefits and i've been reading articles recently of actually uric acid has profound effects on uh, a lot of other effects uh, in the human body which is more advanced at the moment but have a look here what i've done here so what are the effects of the uric acid or the urate crystals in humans both uric acid and urate you know uric acid does get converted to urate accumulate in the form of calculi remember we talked about them before here's calculi in the in in the kidneys over there and uh, there's a lot of calculi over there all right so getting back down to uh, what we said here before is that it's no good in, you know, when you have lots of uric acid and you can't the kidney hasn't got the ability to excrete it properly and basically as you get older the kidneys don't work very well and if you've got stones in they're not going to work well at all um, and it can be deposited in connective tissue causing arthritis and rheumatoid pain and we talked about the uh, gout they may deposit in the kidneys there's examples there that you can see them they looked at before and and in the ureter there's the ureter there causing kidney disease and failure not only does you know it, the more and more of these stones develop the kidney loses its function to excrete a uh, uric acid but not only to excrete uric acid it, to excrete other uh, substances which are um, uh, not necessary anyway so here we got how does uric acid is made in the body well you've got in your cell cells have got dna which is the genetic code all information and rna and they have got these two substances here adenine and guanine and remember adenine and guanine here they are adenine and then guanine over here uh, will be producing uric acid this is the metabolic pathway uh, but the other one that i showed before was the other metabolic pathway here all right that other one was similar so you got this and this coming from uh, dna right so when the DNA breaks down in cells, when there is tissue damage, adenine and guanine, 
Uh, look at it at an Inanguan in here. Look at the double ring structure that they have there. These are referred to as pure, uh, purines, and these monostructures, cytosine and thymine, uh, are a single uh, carbon chain, uh, hexagonal chain. The only difference with RNA and DNA, instead of thymine, you've got uracil. But so these are called uh, pyrimidines, not in necessary for the production, right? Of uric acid, it's these two, the purines, both from the DNA part or the RNA, right? So, in here, you have nulic acid in, uh, ingested, that's through food, tissue destruction, that is from, from DNA being broken down, and so you're increasing your levels of purines in there, and then the purines are broken down through these biochemical pathways here that we said to. Uh, uh, uric acid, all right, so, and uric acid builds up, and since you can't break it down any further to urea and ammonia and the carbon dioxide, the only mechanism that's left for the body is to excrete it, but when you've got too much and it can't excrete, it has to be deposited somewhere, right, it deposits out of the blood into the joints that we called gout, it can go in all kinds of joints, well, usually the, the foot we said, but you saw these other diagrams here which goes into the spinal cord etc. And uh, also in the kidneys. Uh, here is the other biochemical pathway, adenine going down through all these steps and guanine going through these steps, but eventually it's uric acid which is produced. Now. Uh, the food, it's taken into the food, well, how, you know, it's taken in through the stomach, the, the gastrointestinal tract, it's absorbed by these uh, structures here, uh, the intestinal folding, which has got uh, these things called villi, and then it gets into the blood, all right? So that's how high purine foods uh, are taken into the body. Now, let's look at some of these high purine foods. I just missed that. That's just the same thing, just showing you. It's just a different thing. Here are some foods that you really shouldn't take with negative. Avoid foods that raise the uric acid levels. Um, it says gout is a sign your body contains too much uric acid. Your body produces uric acid when it metabolizes chemical compounds called purines. That's what we talked about. Certain foods contain high concentration of purines and increase the risk of gout attack. A gout-friendly diet can help you manage the flare-ups and there we are this is what you know uh you could see the sardines uh, scallops so red meat etc sugary foods seafoods meat especially organ meats you know by organ meats they mean liver and uh, hearts etc uh, kidneys and game meats and alcoholic beverages have high concentrations of purines that raise the uric acid levels I looked that up. Why alcoholic beverages? Because they've got yeast in them, and yeast, um, they've done experiments with uh, micro yeast microorganisms, and they found that they produce a lot of uh, uh, uric acid. Eat healthy things like, look at this, uh, nuts, you know, and stuffed tomatoes are all right. And uh, it says um, vegetables, fruits, nuts, legumes, and whole grains. Low uric acid foods, these are... Um, low-fat dairy products like eggs, you can eat a uh, uh, healthy diet, staying well hydrated, drinking coffee, eat tart cherries, okay, and may also reduce the risk of, yeah, I looked everywhere else. Now, on this slide here, these are the bad ones, the worst foods, like it said in the previous slide, especially high fructose corn syrup and drinks, you know, like these lollipops, etc., and sugars, and obviously, you know, obviously it's chocolate over there. Beer, uh, beer and alcohol, and particularly more the beer. And these, uh, organ meats, and, uh, you know, like game meats and liver. But these were stuffed me up in Greece. There, all this here, see? Shellfish, shrimps, anchovies. I think bulk those. And also the beer, too. And I wasn't drinking enough water. Uh, cherries and vitamin C are good. Coffee is good because it makes you urinate a lot. Water is good. Milk is good because it's got uh, the low fat milk in particular because that's got a lot of proteins which are good. Now this one has got the three uh, types of food and this is worth going through this. Eat those, limit these and avoid these. And look at the ones you should be avoiding up there. Alcohol, anchovies, cod, duck, goose, gravy, 
haddock, herring, mussels, organ meat, salmon, sardines, scallops, tuna, and yeast extracts. Freaking hell, that's what I was doing there, stuffing most of them up. Asparagus, you can limit. Beef is not too bad. Chicken, crab, you can to limit those, you know, lentils, lobster, mushrooms, you know, oats. I didn't realize, and I was having a lot of oats in breakfast. Oysters, you've got a limit to. Um, shrimp, so basically all that. But these are the good ones on here. Almonds, bread, eggs, uh, carbonized beans, lima beans, low-fat cheese, uh, most fruit and veg, pasta, peanuts and peanut butter, rice, skim milk, sunflower seeds, seaweeds, walnuts, and yoga, which is good. All right, so um, now have a look here. Preventative measures is what we have already talked about. Eat a balanced diet, uh, drink lots of water, uh, stay away from sugary uh, drinks, avoid excessive alcohol, especially beer, Le eat less meat, especially liver, sweet bread, seafood, get your protein from food like low-fat dairy, like uh, yogurt, cheese and low-fat milk. Now, uh, what medications you can take? Now, you can take these medications, they're called the non-prescription -pre uh, medicines, this one here, NSAID, non-store anti-inflammatory drugs. And these are these two. I had iso, iso, uh, ibuprofen, 400 milligrams. But what this does do, it actually reduces the swelling in the joints during the gout attack. It doesn't get rid of the actual uric acid. It reduces the swelling, right? Um, other ways to reduce the swelling uh, or the pain is to ice rest and raise the joint but um, so I was taking iso ibuprofen uh, the 400 milligram and that helped so the other thing that you've got to do is obviously your food intake without that now prescription medications uh, this culture scene one is an anti-inflammatory so that doesn't take away the uric acid here's another one here steroids uh, the the uh, non uh, these up here and this non steroid anti inflammatories are better than these in the sense that you can get addicted to them. I think that's what the main is. But these others that uh, excrete uric acid from the kidneys, so in other words, that works at the kidney level. But this one here, peglocytase case, actually breaks down. So this one breaks it down. This is reduces production of it, and this reduces product uh, produces. Uh, acetic acid production. So this reduces, I would like to take this one, it actually breaks down uric acid, but you don't know what the side effects are. So this reduces production, this breaks down, uh, so if these that produce, the, uh, reduce the production is the way they do, but the doctor won't give you these unless you've tried the actual diet method of reducing it, because you know that's pretty bad if they go to this level. Um, so and that's what I'll stop, I think, because the next section I'll start is the advanced section. And I'm already on 18 minutes and 15 seconds. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.